Welcome back to another edition of Trojan Horse. We're in the studio today to discuss USC women's lacrosse. And joining me now is a panel of in-house experts to my left, the man Josh Cohen. Across from me, Chris Cheshire. And of course, Sylvie Sparks is in the studio. Everybody, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, let's start off. Last year, USC women's lacrosse, smooth sailing to the... Uh, into the uh, MPSF tournament and into the NCAAs. They won 20 games in a row before dropping a heartbreaker in the NCAA quarterfinals. This year, it's been a little rougher of a ride so far. They've lost three games, granted to all top 11 opponents, but they lost back-to-back games for the first time since February 2015. So my question will start to my left here with Josh. The recent stumbles for this team, warning flags or perhaps a blessing in disguise? I'm going to go with kind of neither. Here, I think it's really just you're playing quality opponents. You're on the road. I think it's a good thing, maybe a blessing in disguise from the standpoint of these are the teams you're going to see in the postseason or at least the types of teams. Sure. Sylvie? Yeah, I actually agree with Josh. Um, I wouldn't really say it's either. Um, I think like it was the strength of the East Coast teams con- combined with maybe poor offensive play. I mean, we're the only West Coast team ranked in the top 20, and I think that that um, played a factor being on the road in the East Coast not performing as well. And that like it could potentially be better for us if we see them later. Uh, I'm gonna go with warning flags. I really think that like I think they're these are the teams that are gonna be playing in the in the playoffs in the quarterfinals. And if they want to get farther than the quarterfinals, they really need to step their game up because they can't go around losing three times in a row. That's just horrible for morale. And going into a game knowing that you've already lost to this team uh, is a horrible thing to do to go go into it. Chris, I think that's a good point as well. You know. One loss, perhaps you could say blessing in disguise. Maybe you need that to check it a little bit. But three losses, it's a bit of a, it's a bit alarming in the sense of you know, a number of teams have now been able to solve the puzzle. That is, our lacrosse team. Question number two: There's a lot of talent on this team. You look top to bottom, from seniors to freshmen, all all different classes. We've got a lot of talent on this team. We know about Michaela Michael. She's one of the best players in the country. But my question is to you guys. Is she the most important player? And if not, who is perhaps a key player that needs to step up for this team to be at its best as they look to make a deep run in the postseason? We're going to go reverse order. I'm going to send it back over to Chris to start with this one. Uh, I think in terms of uh, morale, Michaela Michael definitely has to step it up, has to make sure she brings her A game every time to, so her team can rally around her. I think her, seeing her perform well is definitely uh, one of the kind of reasons that the team can uh, hold its own at such a high level. Uh, but I also think that like we can't, you can't build an entire team around a single person because sometimes that person can't be in. So I think uh, the freshman Kerrigan Miller, who's run one rookie of the week a couple times in the MPSF, really needs to kind of step her game up to another level and kind of see if she can uh, live up to what Michaela Michael has done for the team. Sure, Sylvie. Um, I think not so much a specific player, but players, the attackers and midfielders, really need to step up their gra- their game to support Michael like they did last week because too often they're caught out of position and we mess up our attacks. I'll give you a specific player. That player's name is Gabby McMahon. Uh, You watch Gabby McMahon, even in the games that they've lost, even in a game like at Florida, those kinds of games, her playmaking ability and her vision is so much more than stats. And so you look at Michaela and primary goal scorers, Kylie Drexel, also in that category. Then you look at secondary goal scorers. The Fresno State game was the first game where Gabby didn't even score a goal. So she's putting in work every week in terms of finding the back of the net, along with Kerrigan, Michaela, Kylie, but the playmaking. You want to run a little weave? Gabby's going to have the ball in her stick. You want to run any kind of little dip or dive towards the cage? She's got it. Gabby McMahon, for me, number 32, is the key in terms of playmaking. Again, not always the stats, not even necessarily the number of assists. It's the assist to the assist, Gabby McMahon. Sure, senior leader right there. No question. You know, once you get into crunch time, a lot yep. of those better teams are going to possibly even try to double-team Michaela Michael, so you need other people to step up. Yep. Don't forget about that. Final question. Last year, as I mentioned earlier, bounced in the quarterfinals. Overtime heartbreaker to Syracuse. This year, how do you guys feel about the prospects of this team? Is this a Final Four team? Is this a national championship team? What do you think, Sylvie? Hit me with it. I think... Um... Gussie, the goalie, and the defense, they're obviously really strong, and they're super consistent. And I think if that keeps up, there is potential to make it back to the Final Four. But, of course, last year's team was really special, and it's going to take it's gonna take a big combined effort. Josh. Come on now, Ben. 
Same thing as the women's soccer discussion. They have it. Don't bring it up, They man. have it at all three levels. The goalie, Gussie, 100% has it. Defense, Lydia Sutton, we've seen her back there, incredible. Ground ball machine alongside Nina Kelty, they have it. And then the primary and secondary goal scoring that I just alluded to, they have it at all three levels. You toss in the midfield as well with Kerrigan and Drew Jackson, et cetera, running the show in there. This team has it in every phase of the game. They can absolutely win it all. Uh, I think I might be a little bit more cynical than Josh. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't. I, I think that they could make it to the Final Four. I don't think they're going to see, see the national championship. But uh, I think it also really depends on how they play at Colorado this upcoming game, see if they can get back into the swing of things. Uh, if they can pull that momentum into the, into the playoffs, they could definitely make it past the quarterfinals, depending on who they play. Uh, but pass uh, into, the, into the national championship, I don't know. I'm not sure it's there. We'll see what happens, and uh, whatever happens, it'll be exciting, and uh, this team does have a lot of talent, yep. great coaching staff also, sure. and uh, we'll just have to see where it goes. Well, we've got Sylvie Sparks in studio, but to see a little more on the fire side of things, we're going to send it over to Savannah now, who's ready to light the torch.